الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة عن سفيان بن عيينة عن عمرو بن دينار عن أبي قابوس مولى عبد الله بن عمر عن عبد الله بن عمرو بن عاص رضي الله تعالى عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن ارحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء وقال العلامة الشيخ صالح عبد العزيز آل الشيخ العلم رحمة نتيجته رحمة في الدنيا وغايته رحمة في الآخرة The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يسأل الشمن الحديث الحديث that is مسلسل بن أولية Those who are merciful, they will be shown mercy by the most merciful. Show mercy and be merciful to those who are in the earth, and the one who is above the heavens will show you mercy. The great scholar, Sheikh Saleh Abd Aziz Ali Sheikh, Hafizullah Taala, he mentions. He says, "Knowledge is mercy. The results of knowledge is mercy in this world." And the ultimate goal of knowledge is mercy in the hereafter. It is tremendous that we remind ourselves with the likes of this, so that our interactions with the people is one that is balanced and that has its origin in mercy. And this is keeping in mind the reality and the threat that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed us of, where he said. Men la yarham la yurham. Whoever does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. So it is incumbent that we remember the likes of this al jaza min jinsi al-amal that the punishment will be appropriate in, in in accordance to the crime. So those who are seeking and looking for mercy then. From the means in which that is attained is by showing mercy and being merciful themselves. We have reached the thirteenth hadith, an Hamza, an Abi Hamza, Afwan, an Abi Hamza, Anas bin Malik, radiyallahu taala anhu, Khadim al Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه حديث متفق عليه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as it comes in the hadith of Abu Hamza Anas bin Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه he was the servant of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he narrated on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he said, "None of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself." This hadith has been collected by Al Bukhari and Muslim. Hadith is agreed upon. Tafakun alay. When we look at this hadith. We see that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he began this hadith by saying, "لا يؤمن أحدكم that none of you believes, ma'am, that none of you uh, believes." What do we understand as relates to this particular statement? The Sheikh Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Abbad Al Badr. Hafidh Allah Taala he mentions, and likewise others from the ulama, like Sheikh Al Islam and Mitzimiyah, they mention 
that what is intended here or what is negated here is the completion of Iman where it says لا يؤمن أحدكم that none of you believes and this is why it's typically translated as none of you truly believes because what is meant is that none of your belief will be complete none of your belief will be complete Naam. also as Shaykh Saleh Abdaziz al Shaykh he mentions he says that هذه الكلمة that this statement لا يؤمن أحدكم that none of you truly believes تدل على أن ما بعدها مأمور به it points us to the fact that that which is mentioned after it is something that we are commanded with نعم that that which is mentioned after this statement none of you truly believes whatever comes next is something that we are commanded to do but the question comes now is this command a command that is due to that affair being recommended or is this a command due to the fact of what is commanded is obligatory so is this yani, what comes next is it that which we are recommended to do or that which we are obliged to do Naam? because at this point it can go either way it could be a command because that thing is obligatory or it could be a command because that thing is recommended Naam? so in order to better appreciate and understand the gravity of what comes next we have to know the answer to this particular question is this command upon a recommendation or is this command upon an obligation Naam? Um, and to show you yani, why it is incumbent that we know that what is meant by or what is negated is the completion of Iman right that helps us in identifying which of the two it is and this is an illustration to show you that the benefits that are extracted from a text whether it be an ayah or a hadith you will find that there are many aspects of it there are many angles to the benefits that are extracted that once brought all together will help us better understand the meaning in totality of that particular ayah or that particular hadith Naam? also with that in mind we should also understand that as it relates to a particular issue to be well grounded in a particular issue then you have to bring all of the proofs and evidences as relates to that particular issue understand each and every one of them with, yani with the dynamics that each and every one of them presents and the different angles and understandings and, and that that can be understood from each and every one of them and bring all of those meanings together and how they work in concert with one another in order to come to the proper meaning or the proper ruling as relates to that particular affair and this is why it is not as such as that an individual can come with one hadith or one ayah and think they know the whole of the issue in totality but rather as Imam al-Albani rahimullah ta'ala used to say you have to bring all of the proofs and evidences as relates to that particular topic together before you can know the proper meaning so this ta'ala, may help us to appreciate more the ulama and that things are not in other words there are sometimes issues that we don't see we don't understand although we may be looking at the same hadith the same ayah the shaykh sees but we don't see because of the knowledge that he has because of the knowledge that he has because of the knowledge of the other texts and proofs and evidences and so on and so forth and how they come together how they work together and how they are merged so on and so forth they're able to see and to understand these nuances of which will escape us due to our lack of knowledge so here it gives us a little bit of that understanding because again the statement none of you truly believes first we have to know 
What does that mean? La yu'minu ahadukum. Because literally, it means none of you believes. None of you believes. Naam. So is that the meaning that none of you has iman? It's negating the origin of iman? Then of course the answer is no. It's not negating the origin of iman. So then therefore, it's negating what? The completion of iman. It's negating the completion of iman. That's a very key component to understand this narration. So now that we have understood that, we also take from that very same statement that whatever comes next is a command. But that command can either be because it's obligatory or it could be because it's recommended. So now, how are we able to understand if it's obligatory or recommended? Is by what? Is by going back to the fact that it completes the iman. So listen to what the Shaykh says. Uh, Shaykh Saleh, Abdul Aziz al Shaykh, he goes on to mention, he says, Dalla ala, that this statement, yani, Dalla ala anna muhabba al mar li akhihi ma yuhibbuhu li nafsi wa jibun. He said, this points us to the fact that, that an individual having love for his brother, that which he loves for himself is wajib. Is wajib. How? Why is it wajib? Right? And I want you to, 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 to listen, yani, so we can, better under, we can better appreciate, rather, the ulama. He says it is wajib. Why? لِأَنَّ نَفِي iman لَا يَكُونُ لِنَفِي الشَّيْءٍ مُسْتَحَبْ he said, because the negation of the completion of Iman will not be for something that's recommended. The fact that the completion of Iman is negated, then this is an indication to us that that which we are commanded with is not recommended, but rather it is wajib. It is obligatory. Naam. So Shaykh Abdul Musan, he mentions, he says, وَهَذَا الْحَنِيثِ نَفْيُ كَمَالِ iman al wajib he says this hadith, it will negate the completion of iman that is necessary. And al Muslim, hatta yuhibba li akhihi al Muslim, ma yuhibbu li nafsi. That the Muslim, his, the completion of his or her iman will be negated until they love for their Muslim brother what they love for themselves. So the completion of our Iman will be unattainable until we love for the Muslims, male and female, what we love for ourselves. The Shaykh, he says, وَذَلِكَ فِي أُمُورِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And it's very important to understand. He said, and this is as relates to the affairs of the dunya and of the akhirah. It is as relates to the affairs of this world and of the hereafter. Naam. Wa yadullu fi thalika anna al an yu'amil al nas bi mithli ma yuhibbu an yu'amiluhu bihi. And this, Allahu Musta'ad. Allahu Akbar. Right? He says is that also what this necessitates is that what and what enters into this is that we have to treat the people in a manner in which we love that we be treated. In other words, that an individual has to interact with the people in a manner in which they themselves love to be interacted with. That we treat others how we want to be treated. Naam, that we treat others how we want to be treated. So I want you to reflect upon this now. Because remember, this is a book of kawaid. This is a book of principles. This is a book that outlined the usul. The usul of, of, of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. Naam. When it comes to refuting the one who has fallen into opposition, right? You'll find that the ulama, even when they have to refute an individual due to their deviation or due to their error, they apply this narration. They apply this narration that none of you truly believes and say lust for his brother or he lusts for themselves. Naam. And this is important for us to understand because rudud, refutations, then they are from the religion. Naam, rudud, babun, min abawab din. They are a subject from the subjects of the religion. It is, in, it is a must, and when we need it, we have to use it. And it has 
its guidelines. Now, and you find the ulama, they stick to these guidelines. And those who are upon the way of the ulama, those who are upon the way of the ulama, those who are upon the way of the sahaba, you find that they stick to the guidelines even when refuting. Even when refuting. Now, why? Because they love for their brother, but they love for themselves. So they refute in a manner that they themselves will want to be refuted if they fell into error. Now, they refute in a manner that they themselves will want to be refuted. They correct in a way that they themselves will want to be corrected. So you find the ulama when they refute against individuals. Now, when they refute individuals for an error or for a, you know, something they have fallen into from bid'ah and so on and so forth, they keep it restricted to what? To the point at hand. This is one. They keep it restricted to the error, right? They don't speak in general, ambiguous terms. They don't speak in terms that need to be decoded, but rather they mention exactly what is the point of deviation, what is exactly the mistake, right? And because of the clarity because of the clarity and yani, they bring the precision that you will find the ulama they will quote from the very same statement that the one who is in opposition made they will bring his statement or they will bring where it was written in that individual's book and say this was the statement written on page so and so in book such and such where this individual says X, Y, and Z. So it's clear. There is no ambiguity. What's the issue? No, your issue is clear. It's spelled out right there. And then they explain and break it down why that is wrong. This is a great benefit. This is brotherly love. Why? Because if one of us were to fall into an error, fall into a mistake, would you love that someone just comes and says, don't take from him? Why? He has issues. What issues? He has issues. Don't take from him. Would you like someone to treat you like this? You'll say, well, you'll say no, that's not, that's, not a, that's, that, that's, 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 that's not fair. What do you mean? If someone told you that to your face, actually, you got issues. The first thing that you're going to say is, what issues? I'll give you, let's go back. I'll give you a simple example. If we were, we were let's say we were eating, right? Let's say you were eating, and then I gestured to you from across the mat either that you got something on your face, right? Wipe your face. What's the first thing you're going to ask me? Where? Is it here, 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 here? Right? You, you want me to narrow it down. If I say, actually, you got something on your face, you're going to say, where? Where's that? Right? Because you want me to narrow it down, you want to know. Is it here? If it was right here, I'm going to wipe here. If it's right here, I'm going to wipe here. Where is it? Because you want to correct it. You want to rectify that. Right? So if someone comes to you and say, Akhi, you got issues. The first thing you want to know is, what issues? Please tell me. So why? So I can fix them. Right? This is how the people of the Sunnah interact. This is how the people of the Sunnah interact. If there's an issue, I'm going to tell you what the issue is in detail. If I can't tell you what the issue is in detail, then... I am not going to say anything because I wouldn't want you to treat me like that. I wouldn't want you to interact with me like that. So if I can't tell you in detail, this is the issue right here, then I'm not going to say anything. Right? If I have just suit of one, I just got suspicion about you, I got some bad thoughts about you, I don't trust you for whatever reason, I can't say, man, I don't trust you. Why? I don't know. This sound feel in my stomach. I don't trust you. You're going to say, it's stuff for Allah. You're gonna, yeah, I gave you no cause and reason justification not to trust me. What do you mean? Stuff for Allah. You want somebody to treat you like that? No. It's like, you ain't even give me a chance. What do you mean? SubhanAllah. This is how brothers treat, this is how you're going to treat your brother? You don't want to be treated like that. And likewise, so you find, even when refuting someone, you have to what? You have to be just. You have to be clear. You have to present exactly this is the problem right here you could put your finger on it this is the problem right here when you said this this is the problem when you did this this is the problem now and you make that clear also you keep it to 
the issue itself. So you find the ulama, when they're refuting those who they're refuting, they don't get into verbally abusing them, calling them all types of names and this and that, that and this. They keep it to the issue. Right? They keep it to the issue. Now, this is not to say that if someone did something that was moronic and you called it and the early, you know, you find the ulama saying that this is you know, from stupidity, then one would issue such a thing. This does not enter into what is meant by that type of verbal abuse and, and so on and so forth. Now, um, so I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. We all know what verbal abuse is. We all know name calling that's not necessary. We all know name calling that is not necessary, right? You don't find the early man doing that when they are refuting a particular individual. Likewise, there may be things that they that is known about an individual. There may be things that's known about an individual, but it is not applicable to the conversation at hand. So they don't bring it up because this is not what we're talking about. You understand? They don't bring it up because it's not what we're talking about. So, for example, if an innovator fell into innovation, you don't find that scholar who's refuting that innovator now speaking about the children of the innovator and his children such and such. What does that have to do with the man and his innovation? Right? It has nothing to do with the man and his innovation. So they keep it where it is. Now, you find these individuals who claim to be following the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. when it comes to this issue of refuting, you don't find... Many, unfortunately, or you don't find some, let's say, you don't find some applying the likes of these guidelines. You don't find that. But you find them bringing what? Extreme generalities. They don't narrow down what is the issue. Got an issue. What's the issue? They know the issue. What? Achim <laughs> make tova. Okay. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah wa tubini. But what, spe what specific sin are you referring to? I mean, I know I do sins. You know you do sins, right? But if you tell us someone make toba, okay, for what particular sin are you referring to? What, what sin I'm supposed to make toba for? Tell me this, right? Because a part of making toba, it has, it has conditions, right? You have to leave off the sin. Okay, if I don't know what sin you're referring to, I'm going to leave it off. You have to, you have, to have a, a, a resolve not to return back to the sin. Right? If I don't know what specific sin you're talking about, how can I have reserve? And how can I have uh, 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 you know, firm, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, decision that I'm not going to return back to that particular? I don't know what sin you're talking about. Right? Um, you're supposed to feel remorse over the sin. I'm, I don't know what sin you're referring to. I'm going to feel remorse over it. If the sin involved the right of a human, I have to return the right. I don't know whether this sin involves the right of a human or not. So how? Make t how? I can make told in general, but what are you talking about specifically that was a catalyst that made you say that statement? Man, you know what you did. That sound like a brother? That sound like, yeah? That sound like somebody treats you like a brother? Or that sound like somebody who's just, yeah, he has, has ill intent for you? Right? But these things are very important because if we're going to say Sunni, Salafi, then you got to be Salafi. It's not just a, it's not just a word. It's not just a statement that you say, not just a claim. And he couldn't get down, he wasn't in Layla. Everybody claimed to have a connection with Layla. We had to kill her, but she don't, she don't accept that for them. She don't know them. Everybody claimed to know her, but she don't know them. Right? So just making a claim is not sufficient because claims don't change reality. Now, a person say he's righteous, but he's not righteous. That mean he's righteous because he said he's righteous? No. That's like if I said that, you know, you know I don't know, this, this pin cap is, is um, a skittle. That makes it a skittle, it makes it a tic tac, makes it now later. You gonna eat it now? Cause I said it's a now later. No, you break your teeth and you hurt yourself. Just changing the name or calling something something doesn't change this reality. So we have to implement the these rules. The ulama put these put these ahadith together that have the principles because they're not just in one area, not but they they affect all of a person's life. Even in, and I'm bringing this as an example, even in the, 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 uh, the issue, and even in the bab of jarh with ta'adeen, it enters into it. You interact with your brother like you want to be interactive with him. Yeah. Because that's your brother. You point out his mistake, 
Not because you want to destroy him, but because you want him to rectify his mistake. You point out his mistake to those who may be following in that mistake because Mandela ala shar, whoever points to an evil, then what happens? They get the, the sin of those who follow them in the evil. So you point out to those maybe following your brother in evil, listen, what he did was evil. Don't follow him in that. Why? To reduce his amount of sin. The same way you would want someone to stop people from following you in something that was error that you have done. Why? So that when you come out your grave, your muqiyama, you don't got millions of people follow you in some sin. Now you got to share with that sin as well. No, minimize that. Right? That's all from brotherly love. But we have to apply it even... In, 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 in the likes of these terms Our iman is not truly complete Until we love for our brothers What we love for ourselves In the affairs of the dunya In the affairs of this life And in the affairs of the akhirah oh, And so thus we treat them As in a manner in which we ourselves Want to be treated And to show you how the stakes of this They are high Like this is not something that is a joke Right Interacting with people in a manner in which you yourself want to be interacted with or treating people in a manner that you yourself want to be treated. The Shaykh he brings, he says, and on the authority of Abdullah bin Amr bin Aus, mentioned in a long hadith, the Prophet وسلم, he said, Whoever wants to be saved from the fire and enter into the Jannah, then let his death come to him while they believe in Allah and in the last day. And he gives to the people that which he loves that they will give unto him. So now what is mentioned here? What is mentioned here? It is mentioned here that whoever wants to be saved from the fire and enter into Jannah have to have two characteristics. The first of them, believe in Allah in the last day. So they have to believe. What's the next thing that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned? They treat the people like they themselves want to be treated. So how important is that now? Right? How important is that? And because you find, this is what you find. The people of the Sunnah, going back to the uh, example of Jarh with Ta'adil, the people of the Sunnah, the true people who are treading upon the Sunnah and, and, and trying to implement the Sunnah, you will find that what? They don't have double standards. They don't have double standards. Right? Because anybody who will treat you away, but then they want to be treated differently, this is an illustration of what? A double standard. It's a standard for you and another standard for me. A standard for y'all and another standard for me and those with me. You understand? The people upon the sunnah, this is not their way. This is not how they interact. This is not how they interact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his noble book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his noble book he senses individuals who have this type of ill behavior Allah ta'ala he says woe to the mutafifun who are these mutafifun or these mutafifun who are they they are those who they give less in measure as relates to others now, they are those who they give less in measure and weight as, release, as relates to the rights of others. Allah Ta'ala goes on to explain who they are. وَيْنُونَ لِلْمُطَّفِّفِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا اكْتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ Those who, when they have to receive by measure from men, they demand their right in full. When it's time for them to get their due, they want theirs in full. When it's time for them to get paid, they want to get paid in full. Right? But when they have to give the, by weight or measure to others, they want to give them less than what is due. 
When it comes to them, they want theirs in full. When it comes to others, they cheat them a little bit. 90%. But they want 100%. Right? This is a blameworthy characteristic. Allah Ta'ala, he says what? Woe unto them. Woe unto them. Because this is not from our way to have these, the likes of these double standards. Because double standards is an illustration of what? Of misguidance. This is not correct. This is wrong. This is an error. Now, وقال الحافظ ابن رجب he mentions, he says, والحديث, حديث أنس يدل على أن المؤمن يسره ما يسر أخاه المؤمن he says this hadith points to the fact that the believer, he is made happy <coughs> he is made happy by that which brings joy to the fellow believers Naam. Now I want you to reflect on the likes of this narration and how reaching its benefits are. And especially in the climate that we're living today here in America and across the world. Of racial injustice and prejudice, racism, so on and so forth. Naam. And the reality is, is that only Islam applied only Islam applied will destroy racism. Only Islam applied will destroy racism. And I want that to be very clear. Because we're not, we don't live in a bubble, right? We don't look at the world through, the, through rose-shaded lenses to believe that they're not Muslims who are racist. They are. Why? Because in that particular issue, they're not applying Islam. They're not living by what Islam commands them to be. And to live by. Okay? So this is why you may have individuals going to some masajid and they give salams and no one returns their salams. Why? Because his skin, his, the hue of his skin is too dark for you. You don't like that? Right? So he give you salams. You don't want to return his salams? We don't like the black people here. We ain't giving no salam. Would you want to be treated like that? If you gave somebody salams, do you want them to look you in your face and not say nothing? Or you want them to return your salams? If you gave someone salams, you want them to look you in your face and before returning your salams, ask you, are you Muslim? Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. What do you mean? <laughs> right? Or, 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 or would you feel a little disrespected by, you know, such an absurd question? Right? When you apply this hadith, you realize in light of this hadith, there's no room for that type of behavior. And likewise, on the flip side, right? If a person comes into a masjid and they're, you know, too white. They don't, you know, say, man, get out of here. Salaamu alaikum. You look at them, whatever. You, you Muslim? You don't treat them like that, right? That's wrong. Based on what? Why are you treating them like that? You want to be treated like that? No, you got mad when you did this. You over there, right? Okay, so why are you doing it right here? You understand? Now, qisa ala dhalik. Use this as, you know, in, every, in every regard. In every regard. When it comes time for you to ask for a woman's hand in marriage. You want them to turn you away because of where you're from? No. So then why do you do it to others? Right? When you speak with people, do you want them to speak to you in a disrespectful manner or respectfully? So why do you speak in disrespectful manners to others? This enters into everything because as Muslims, and I, and I really want us to understand this, what makes the believers happy makes other believers happy. And have we reached that level? When a believer wins, a believer winning, no matter where in the world, makes us happy. Have we reached that level? Where when their pain is our pain, their joy is our joy. We want to see them succeed like we want to succeed. Have we reached that level of Iman? Because being upon the Sunnah is not that we just say these things and yani, rattle off these texts and then that's it. But is that we apply them. Is that we apply them and we reach this level. Is that we're trying to reach a high level in Iman. If a person says that they are 
and a Salafi, right? What does that mean? That you are upon the way of the Quran, you're upon the way of the Sunnah, you're upon the way of the Sahaba. Okay, the Sahaba, they were those that had low Iman, weak Iman. No, they had high Iman, strong Iman. Naam? They were the best of the believers. So if you truly try to be upon their way, then you have to strive to have what? High Iman. Taqwa. Fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we categorize the Sahaba as being those who didn't fear Allah? No, they were from those who feared Allah the most out of the Muslims. The generation who were the best of the generations. So we have to have a concern to strive, a concern to cleanse and clean our soul, a concern to have high iman, a concern to have high moral conduct, so on and so forth. This is of extreme importance, right? So do we, are we happy by what makes the Muslims happy? Naam. وَيُرِيدُ لِأَخِيهِ الْمُؤْمِنْ مَا يُرِيدُهُ لِنَفْسِهِ مِنْ الْخَيْرِ Do we want for the believers from good what we want for, for, for ourselves? وَهَذَا كُلُّهُ إِنَّمَا يَأْتِي مِنْ كَمَا سَلَامَتِهِ الصَّدَرِ مِنْ الْغِلْ وَالْغِشْ وَالْحَسَدِ And all of this, when you have reached this level, when the, what, what makes the Muslims happy makes you happy. When you want for them what you want for yourself. All of this points to the fact of an individual having a clean chest. An individual having a clean chest that is free from any type of rancor and animosity, any type of deception, any type of envy. Naam. Because the one who has hasad, the one who is envious, he doesn't want anybody to have a good that he don't have. He doesn't want anyone to have a good that he doesn't have. Or he doesn't want anyone to have the same good he has. He doesn't want anyone to have something he don't have. This guy is so sick, he doesn't even want them to be the same with him. He got it, he don't want them to have it too. Naam. He has it. He doesn't want them to have it. This is the one who is. This is the one who is the envier. Naam. لأنه يحب أن يتميز عن الناس بفضائله because he wants to be. He wants to stand out away from people with what he has with himself. He wants to. He he wants to be the only one that has this this good thing. The only one who يعني uh, uh, has these blessings and that he doesn't want it for anyone else. Naam. وين فريدة Biha anhum. He wants to be the only one with this and that. Well, iman, but faith, yaqtabli khilaf dhalik. But faith, it necessitates, yani, the opposite of that. Khilaf dhalik. It necessitates its opposite. That we want for our brothers or we want for ourselves. Well, who and what is faith? What does it necessitate? Well, who and yashrakahu al mu'minun kulluhum. Is that he wants all of the believers to have what he has, what Allah has blessed him with, from good. Naam? He wants all of the believers to be blessed with what he has from good. So now, this may bring us a better appreciation for the statement of Imam Shafi'i, where he said that he desired all of the believers to be scholars. He wanted everyone to have knowledge. Naam? Like this is the way of the scholar. He wants everyone to have knowledge. Naam? Now I want you to reflect upon this. You have individuals who claim they want good for the people, but they don't try to enrich the people. They don't try to enrich them. They want the people to stay down. Naam? They don't want you to learn Arabic. They want to be the ones that, that know Arabic and they want to keep you there dependent upon them. They don't want you to make connections with the ulama. They want to be the, the bawab, yani. they want to be the doorman to the ulama. They don't want you to have access. No, you have to come to us. This is not the characteristic of a person who is applying 
these principles, these principles of the deen. This is not the characteristic of a person who's applying these principles. But the person who really wants good for you, he wants to see you thrive. He wants to see you increase. He wants to see you learn. He wants to see you have access to the ulama. This individual won't, won't feel anything in his chest if you surpass him. But that will make him happy. The fact that the student now becomes the teacher and has exceeded the teacher. This makes him happy. Not sad. The fact that you will have access to early man that he didn't have access to makes him happy. Not sad. This is the way of those who are truly upon the sunnah. So when you find others who are playing this, listen, you have to stay in your place and we're going to be the hamzatul wasr. We're going to be the connection between you and between what we say you need to be connected to. That's a person who what? He has an agenda. He don't care about you. That's a person who's looking to use you, to exploit you. He doesn't really care about you. He doesn't care that you, he doesn't really want that you apply these rules and regulations of Islam. They don't want that. They want to use Islam to control you. So they can achieve their agenda. You have to beware. And why am I saying this? I'm saying this very clearly. Why? Because sometimes people do not connect the dots. How many of us have heard the likes of this hadith? A lot of us, right? All of us, right? How many of us have seen some of the treachery that I mentioned? All of us, right? Have we connected it back when we saw this treachery that you were in violation of this hadith? Did we connect that dot? Some of us have. Some of us may have not. Right? But when a person will tell you this hadith, you will, they, you will say that what? This is Islam 101. You love for your brother, but you love for yourself. Right? This is one of those concepts that is universally accepted. You go to a cafe on the street and say, you're supposed to treat people the way you want to be treated and they'll accept it from you. Right? Because they even, they even walk around and, they, and with this and they call it the golden rule. Treat others like you want to be treated. Correct? This is common sense. One on one, right? So how come when we see this treachery, we don't call it for what it is? Now, and anyone who comes forward and they, and, they, and, they, and they bring forth this type of treachery, how in the world do you say they're a noble brother? Noble with what? Noble and treachery? You see, that's an oxymoron. Don't even sound right. It's like dirty clean. I mean, what is it? Right? So it's incumbent that these dots are connected so we can call a spade a spade and identify what's wrong when we see it. And then we don't accept it. Let alone say it's good and promote it. Nah. It is incumbent that we start implementing because a lot of the fitna that happens, it happens because people do not apply the rules and regulations of the sunnah. They do not apply the rules and regulations of Salafiyah. How many people talk about Salafiyah but don't know what Salafiyah is? Now, how many people hate Salafiyah? Why? Because they don't know what it is. And why do the people hate it who don't know what it is? Because the people who claim it don't know what it is and they act contrary to it and then they're taken as the example of what it is and, they're, and, 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 and used to define it when they themselves aren't living in accordance to it. But then when it's explained to the people, they what? They accept it. They say, oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's Islam. Okay, I get it. The name was throwing me off, but I, what you're talking about, I, I get that. That's what that is? So how do I, I was looking at these guys over here. You see? Don't be a fitna for the Muslims that you pushed them away from good due to your bad behavior. The Shaykh goes on and he says that, yani from good is that you want all the Muslims to have the good that Allah Ta'ala has given you. Maghairi and Qusa alayhi min hushay without them being decreased in anything. You want them to have the exact same good you have. You don't want them to be decreased in anything. Fayambari, the Shaykh goes on to say, Fayambari lil mu'min and yuhibba lil mu'mineen ma yuhibbuhu li nafsi. So a believer has to love for the believers that which he loves for himself. Wa yakrahu lahum ma yakrahu li nafsi. And he has to hate for them what he hates for himself. Wa idha ra'a min akhihi al muslim naqsan fi deenihi ashtahada fi islahihi. 
And if he sees in his brother a deficiency in his religion, then he strives to rectify him. Oh, subhanAllah. If he sees from his brother a deficiency in his religion, he tries to rectify him. He tries to fix him. That's the person who is your true brother. That's the person who is a sincere advisor. Not the person who see you got an issue and he see you got a problem and he say, you know what? You cut off, man. Get away from him. Stay away from him. He got a problem. He looking for any reason to cut you off. Any reason to get rid of you. Any reason to drop you. That's contrary to this. The first goal is to what? To fix it. To fix it. Right? This should be the, the, the way. You strive to fix it. You strive to bring rectification. If that can't be accomplished because the person is obstinate upon what they are upon, then you take it to the next level and you apply what is appropriate. Okay? But the first, the default is not amputation that's not the default you wouldn't want to treat your pinky like that so why are you treating a whole human being like that this necessitates that we have to strive to make sure that the believers are upon the good in their aqidah they're upon the good in their ibadah they're upon the good in their character that they are upon what is correct they believe correctly so the fact that we see our brothers believe it incorrectly that doesn't sit well with us. We can't let that slide. We have to talk about these issues. The fact that we see our brothers and they are praying in a manner that's incorrect or worshiping Allah in a manner that's incorrect upon bid'ah, that does not slide for us. We have to make sure they're not upon bid'ah, that they're upon sunnah. Now, when we see our brothers and their character is not the way it should be, that doesn't fly for us. We have to make sure that they're upon the way of the Prophet so I said, as it relates to their character. Now, this is why those who are upon the Sunnah, the ulama, they are so passionate about these things. Why? Because they don't want to see the, the Muslims upon incorrect beliefs. They don't want to see the Muslims upon bid'ah. They don't want to see the Muslims upon yani, superstitions and so on and so forth. They want them to be upon that which is correct. So anyone who comes and says, I don't want you to talk to me about no bid'ah, 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 then we can never accept that. Why? Because I want good for you. And you don't even know what is good for yourself. So I'm not going to go based upon your assessment of the situation, but I'm going to give to you what I know is good for you, even if you don't realize it. Bid'ah is not acceptable. Period. Believing incorrectly is not acceptable. Period. Not being upon the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is not acceptable. Period. So no, I'm not going to accept it from you, because I don't accept it for myself is not acceptable. You have to be upon the sunnah of the Prophet and we're going to strive hard to educate and convey that to you. Period. This is the manner. This is the manner. So the believer, he is not one who is going to leave the believers and watch them fall into destruction while they're lookers and all, yeah, and just passively watching. No. But they're going to try to rectify that, that situation. There's so much that could be said and this enters into so many things. Inshallah ta'ala, this is uh, food for thought so as to, to look and to reflect and to think about as relates to this particular hadith and how it, 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 it's applicable to so many, many aspects of our, of, our, of, our, of, our, of our worldly life and so many aspects of our, uh, of our deen, of our religion. The shaykh, he extracts some benefits from this hadith. He only brings four. And as we know, there are many benefits, but he brings, he highlights four benefits from this particular hadith. The first of the benefits is that, that verily it is incumbent upon a believer uh, that he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. And that he hates for his brother what he hates for himself. Now, and that's in general. We love for our brothers what we love for ourselves in every affair. Now, that they are upon good like we want to be upon good. They, they, uh, we treat them good like we want to be treated good. Speak to them good like we want to be spoken to. So on and so forth. To the end of it. Right? That we interact with them the way we ourselves wanted to be interacted when they treated. And that we hate for them we hate for ourselves. We don't want to be hungry. We don't want our brothers to be hungry. We don't want to be thirsty. We don't want our brothers to be thirsty. We don't want to be homeless. We don't want our brothers to be homeless. Right? We don't want to be upon bid'ah. We don't want our brothers to be upon bid'ah. We don't want to be upon shirk. We don't want our brothers to be upon shirk. We want to, yeah, yeah to the end of it. Right? But, like, also, this hadith, the second benefit is that there is يعني, it is يعني, um, encouraged. There's an encouragement 
to, to be like this, to love for our brothers, we love for ourselves. Where's that encouragement? Another benefit. Where's that encouragement? In the fact that the completion of Iman is negated for the one who doesn't do this. The fact that the completion of Iman is negated, this is what? This is an encouragement now for us to what to do it because we want our Iman to be completed. So treating our brothers good is what? It's being good to ourselves because this is how our Iman gets completed. Wanting our brothers to be happy is what? It's how we, we, we get to be happy because we want our Iman to be completed and that's what's going to make you happy. Right? No. Nah. You're saying number two is, is what? Number two is that is an encouragement for us to want for our brothers what we want for ourselves. Encouragement. Yeah. It's an encouragement. From the standpoint that what? That our iman will, will not be complete until we want for our brothers what we want for ourselves. So this is an encouragement for us to want for our brothers what we want for ourselves. Motivator. It's a motivation. Yeah. It's a motivator. I said. Now. The third benefit is that and the mu'minin yatafawatuna fil iman. Naam. And I'm just going to mention this just briefly, just so we so we can see just the beauty of this. Is that this is a this is an indication that the believers are different in iman. This is an indication that the believers are different in iman, meaning on different levels. That some have stronger iman than others. Some have iman that's more complete than others. This is very significant. Why? There are two groups I want to highlight from the people of innovation. They believe iman is one thing. There are no levels. It's just one thing. They are the khawarij and they are the murji'ah. That's why extracting this point of benefit is, is, is vital because it shows us that even that the Muslims have different levels of Iman, some stronger, some higher, some, you know, you know. so the Khawarij say Iman is just one thing. Either you have it or you don't. You do a sin, all of your Iman leaves. You a kafir. Right? Why? What led them to that, to being astray like that and to being confused like that? Is because they think Iman is one thing. It's just one thing. They don't know. It's levels. They don't know some people have better Iman than others. They don't know some people have stronger Iman than others. Some people have more complete Iman than others. They, they don't understand that. So this is what led them to their innovation on this, on this side. On the flip side, the Murji'a. They say, no, no, no. Iman is one thing. If you got it, you got it. And nothing can, 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 can harm it. So if you got it, then your iman is the same like the iman of Abu Bakr, same like the iman of, 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 of the angels, because if you got it, you got it. Is that correct? Of course not. <laughs> right? But what has led them to go astray is what? They don't understand the concept. They don't understand I mean, what is iman. That iman is not just one thing that either is there or is not there, but iman is of levels. It increases, it decreases. That point is of extreme importance because when you know you understand that point, it will save you from falling into the likes of this innovation of the Khawarij and of the Murji'ah. Naam. So, uh, Shaykh Abdul Mahsan, he brings out this point. Why? Because it's of extreme importance. It's of extreme importance. You can't be a part of Sunnah if you don't understand this point. Naam. And where do we get that from? This hadith. Which again shows us and gives us an appreciation of, of, of the ulama. How many times have we read this hadith? They are from amongst of those who memorize this hadith. Okay, has this point ever jumped out at you that this was extracted from this hadith? So the ulama see what we don't see. We could be looking at the same thing. Could have read the same page. They see what we don't see. Why? Because of their knowledge, the depth of their knowledge. Now, and the last point that he mentions is that uh, Ta'bir bin Akhi is that the, the fact that the Prophet said, let me utilize brother, right? It shows us in there that there is an affection, that the Muslims should have affection for one another. Right? And I want you just to contemplate on this. Affection for one another. Where you have love, concern for one another. This is how the Muslims are supposed to be. Right? Um, and, th and, 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 and for this and that which is uh, pointing to this fact, the Prophet I said, I mean, use the word brother, that you love for your brother. 
Naam, because the believers are brothers. Very, the believers are nothing but brothers. Naam, because we're brothers. So your brother, you don't hate your brother. You don't, yani, you don't want to see harm happen to your brother. You don't want your brother to be destroyed, but you want your brother to yani, be prosperous, to benefit, uh, and, and the like. So we see from this that we should have love and affection for each other, love and affection for the Muslims, which is of, 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 of extreme, extreme, extreme importance. Inshallah ta'ala, let us reflect over the likes of this hadith and the benefits that are contained therein and how it is beneficial in our worldly affairs and in affairs of our hereafter is beneficial to our worldly affairs and to our religion. So much benefit, so much benefit, but we'll leave it at that point. And then the Shaykh, he goes on to get into the next hadith. Uh, can, but we will stop here. Thank you.